and we are here to praise the name of Jesus. Amen? All right, please stand with us as we begin to worship this morning. in it. 
for a moment. Whether that's silently in your heart or if you can verbalize some praise this morning, whether you are standing in the pit or you're standing victoriously on your rubble, let's praise him right now. If you're in the wilderness, but Jesus, we just magnify your name in this place. You are great and you are worthy of all praise. Jesus, thank you. You are so good. Your presence is rich here. And you've gathered your people together. And there are wildernesses and there are rich forests in this room. There are springs of hope and there are dry places. And you brought us together in this place. Let us be let our eyes be open, Jesus, this morning to see the body of Christ and the unity of this moment, Jesus. What a perfect place to stand on a, on a platform of worship to come together and give you praise. In light of all the darkness of this world, we can be in this place and we can proclaim your goodness and your victory because it's true. And nothing on this on this earth could ever diminish your victory. So Jesus, just magnify our praises today. Whether we're building altars in the wilderness today, or if we're celebrating victory, Jesus, let today be a day of worship. I love you, Lord. Oh, your presence is sweet. Let it just continue permeating in this room, that we would continue in being an aroma for you, Jesus. I love you. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, y'all. Good morning, Northside. Y'all may be seated. Uh, welcome to the house of the Lord. Amen. Because this is this is just, this is his house. And here we go. Um, so if anyone doesn't know, I'm Pastor Hannah. I'm the youth pastor around here. Um, I just want to say welcome. This is a place, this is Northside, and we are... Our, our passion and our mission is making disciples through the presence of Jesus Christ. And he is present. Amen. Amen. Well, I, get, I have the honor of telling you some really cool things that are getting ready to happen. Um, I don't know if you all noticed some weird things going on around the church. Um, but it's not weird. It's cool. It's just abnormal to our normal decor. Uh, but we have Vacation Bible School coming up this week. And it is going to just, it's just going to be awesome. It's going to be a kingdom impacting event for sure. Um, we've been working very hard. Pastor Katie has really been leading that. Um, and in that, it's not too late to get involved. You know, like it's never going to be too late to have a part in what we're doing um, at Northside this week. If you have some kids that you can round up in your life, you know, with their parents' permission, of course. Um, but, I mean, just round them up and bring them. Like, we're, you don't have to pre-register or something. Yes, with permission. Okay, I'm getting I'm getting looks. Um, yeah, obviously you need parent permission. But, like, bring the kids because it's going to be fun. Yeah, sure, there's going to be an ice cream truck. I'm looking very much forward to that. But there's also just going to be worship and bringing the word to kids. And setting that foundation for them. Um, so it's going to be awesome. But it's this week. It's Monday through Wednesday. Um, and we're just going to party, you know, the whole time. Um, so get ready. Bring kids. You know, if you pre-register them, that's cool. But also, if they show up, we're not going to turn anybody away. Um, but if you want to volunteer still, I know there's a place we can put you. Um, and there's also an adult class. So if you want to come and be part of that, please come and be part of that also. Like that is definitely a resource that has been prepared. It's not something just thrown together. So if you want to come and be part of that, it's an all skate and we mean that. Um, so, so come and, and do that, but also just be in prayer 
because the enemy wants to tear it down. The enemy wants to tear it down, but God's going to be victorious. So that's VBS. It's happening this week. We're, we're gearing up, and we're ready to go. It's going to be great. Um, the other thing, we are having Saturday night Sundays. Um, S-U-N-D-A-E-S. Okay, we are going to go to Dream It, and we're going to hang out. Like, it's just going to be a blast. There's nothing uh, crazy or weird about it. We are just getting together to have ice cream as a family. Um, that's family. That's discipleship. That's community. And we're taking this party down the road. Um, so we're going to do that Saturday, August 3rd at 7 p.m. I didn't want to say the wrong date or time because me and numbers aren't friends. Um, but, yeah, we're going to go down to the Dream It, the new one down here. If anyone hasn't been there, there's a new one down here. Don't go to Murray Hill go down here on Dunham now, okay? Um, but that's going to be a blast, and it's just going to be fun. So if you don't like ice cream, still come and hang out. Um, we are going to be praying over Eagles View. Um, I think many of you have participated in this in the past, whether you've actually physically gone to the school with us to pray over them, or if you've been praying from wherever you are. Um, our church has definitely partnered with Eagles View. God has definitely orchestrated some connection and relationship with that place. And we're gearing up for school. I know, sorry to school teachers and students in the room. We are gearing back up for school. Um, so we're, we're gonna be praying for that. We're gonna go and anoint this school in prayer because uh, that's a place where they get to talk about Jesus with some kids who really don't know him. And that's a huge burden. So we're going to go and we're going to do that on August 4th after church. We're going to go together and do that. Um, so what if you cannot physically be there, please still be praying um, for Eagles View, for the teachers and students and administration there. Because it's going to be, it's, it's a big thing that they're getting ready to go. Um, the other thing, we are collecting for our serve. We are collecting cases of water bottles for Hubbard House. So we, um, we're asking that people will bring those. That's part of our serve project this week. So uh, yeah, if you grab a case of water for your house, just grab an extra. Or if you're not grabbing a case of water, just pop on over to the water section at the grocery store if you're able to, um, to do that. That would be greatly appreciated. Um, in case y'all didn't know, it's hot outside. Um, so being able to give people water is a big deal. And that's, that's something our kids get to give people in PBS this week. So be part of that. and. That's all of the announcements. That's what's going on as of right now. Um, Event-wise, that's evidence of the work that God's doing here in each of us. Like all of the things that we do come from the things that we do here. And so it excites me that we get to be a church that does things out of the overflow out of the overflow of our relationship with Jesus comes fun things like let's go get together and go get ice cream and something like that might look like oh this is just an easy thing for us to do is just go grab ice cream but it's evidence of the community that Jesus is building and growing and the relationships that we value so much we want to spend time together beyond Sunday morning so all of these things we could look at as events or we could look at it as kingdom and that's what everything is VBS is kingdom Saturday night, Sundays is kingdom. Serving is kingdom. And we get to be part of that. And another way we get to be part of that is giving our tithes and offerings um, and, and just equipping even more and surrendering our resources to the work that God wants to do in and through this place. So with that, if our ushers would come forward, we're going we're gonna to pray over our tithes and offerings and, um, and be obedient with that aspect of our lives to Jesus. Would y'all pray with me? Jesus, thank you. Again, Lord, I say thank you. And sometimes I blow through those words, but God, thank you. For everything that you do. And for who you are. Because who you are is so much bigger than what you do for me. You are mighty to be praised. And Jesus, as we take this time to pause and honor up our honor you with our money with the things and resources that you've entrusted to us Jesus would there be a, a newfound freedom in the obedience Jesus would there be a newfound hope 
for your provision. Jesus, whatever lies the enemy wants to speak to us, would you help us not just in giving money, but in surrendering all of our lives, all of ourself to you, that there would just be a new freedom this morning. Jesus, help us to worship you in boldness, in every form, in writing a check, and putting money in, and in singing praises. Jesus, would we have a boldness in our worship. Lord, we honor you, and we lift up these gifts of tithes and offerings to you, Jesus, and just trust that you're going to take care of them. Help us to be good stewards, Lord. I love you, Jesus, and it's in your mighty name I pray. Amen. Oh, we'll see. 
day by day. Thank you for the privilege of prayer. We stand today to pray for our brothers and sisters who are suffering. Father, we pray that you give them courage and strength. We pray, Father, for our nation, that you might bring healing, and that there might be a spiritual awakening like we've never seen before. When hearts turn to you, we pray for our friends and family who don't know you. Would you speak to them, open their eyes, and open our eyes to ways we can be your light, your presence, that they might see you in us. Father, as we continue now in this service, we pray for your spirit to rest upon our sister, Deshaun, as she brings the message today, and open our hearts and our minds to hear from you. Give her the freedom to speak, put words into her, into her mind, take words out that may need to be taken out, whatever it may be. Lord, we are looking to you in this time that we might leave this place changed people because we've been in your presence. And we pray it all for your glory. Amen. 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 Wow. Good morning, church. It's good to see you all. Glad you're here. If you are in fifth grade or under, you are dismissed. You guys are going to be having an amazing, amazing time uh, together with some amazing leaders that are going to be pouring Jesus. So if you're in fifth grade or under, you are dismissed. And there will be a huge line of littles going that direction. I, I got stuck on, I love that song we just sang, we, we See Your Promises, and I got stuck on those words, and I had to write some things down. It says in that, in that song, uh, and I'm not speaking, so I'm going to be very, very short, I promise. It said, we've seen your faithfulness. You remember seeing that word? And we sang it, and we all put our hands up in this one. Question, why is that not enough? Why is that not enough? Every single one of us in this room can probably say, I've seen where God was faithful in this through a healing, through a miraculous check that came from your Aunt Bertha from 27 years ago in the mail, whatever the case may be, through a job that just you weren't supposed to get, but God, gives, God said, I'm not going to just give you a job, but I'm going to give you what you were thinking you were going to be paid as well. I mean, we just see over and over and over. Why is that not enough? Wow, may we live, may we live, may we live 
in that. For the last several weeks, if you haven't been a part of Northside, we have been walking through um, the fruit of the Spirit that's located in Galatians. And each week we've been unpacking a different um, attribute of that fruit. And I got to tell you, there every single week has just rocked me. Um, I hope that you have been able to walk away, not just saying, oh, that was a wonderful message, or thank you, Jesus, for your word or whatever, but wow, going, I gotta chew on that for the next seven days, because I don't know that that, my spirit, is, or I don't know that that's what I think, but that's what God says, and so therefore I have to realign myself up with what he is, and so this week is gonna be no different. We've had some amazing, amazing um, pastors and speakers um, from this stage, and this morning is gonna be no different. Um, these are some this is a very, very dear friend of mine. Um, she not only has a deep love for the church, but she has an incredible, incredible love for the word of God. Um, if you're ever around Deshaun for about 13 seconds, you will know that Jesus is center. And um, we're going to align up with what um, he has to say. So church family, I would love for you to make welcome this morning. This is Deshaun Jones, and um, she is going to be speaking this morning and bringing God's word. Come on, make a little noise. And uh, so I'm just so very, very excited that um, that I get to be friends with her because she's just cool, y'all. <laughs> and um, her and her husband, Leon, they're just great, great people. Um, I'm so excited. So please, please turn your attention um, to what is, and I would ask you to ask this question right now, God, in the next few moments, what do you have for me? That's a wonderful question, but now there's an active part. Now, what do you have to do? We've got to now listen to what does he have for each and every one of us. So share with us, my friend, be faithful. I know you will. And God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise I say praise the Lord, everybody. Praise who just Lord. sung the song, and the song said we found him to be faithful Amen. in every situation, in every circumstance. Yes. We found him to be faithfulness. His faithful, faithful, his faithfulness has never failed us. To this day, he's been faithful to us. He's brought us to this place, right? He brought us to this place. I would clap my hands if I was you because he didn't have to do it. He didn't have to wake us up this morning. He didn't have to have us cold in our right mind, but because of his faithfulness, he could have left us way fast. Some of us was in gutters. Some of us was in alleys, but he didn't leave us. And that warrants a praise. Amen. Sometimes it's time to give him the fruit of our lips. Amen. Clapping our hands is good. Yes. But he says everything, let everything. Yes. I know the message today is faithfulness, but we need to be faithful in one thing. Let everything, yes. everything that has breath, yes. praise ye the Lord that Amen. requires yes. Yes. a sound from our lips. Amen. Bless God in this place on this morning. Hallelujah. See, I know what he did for me. Amen. Sometimes we got to have a flashback Amen. Amen. to remember what the Lord yes. Yes. has done. Not only what he has done, but what he is doing. Amen. Praise the Lord, Praise Praise the Lord. O ye people, and shout with the voice of triumph. Amen. I give God glory on this morning for allowing me to be in the presence of this, his people. Amen. I thank him for bringing me to this place. I thank him for saving me. Amen. Amen. Delivering me. Amen. Putting his word in my belly. Amen. He didn't have to do it. I wasn't fit for it. But because of his faithfulness. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'll pray. God. As we come this morning, we tell you thank you. God, I tell you thank you for all that you've done in this place thus far. How you have blessed in the worship service. God, I tell you thank you. Thank you for blessing the worship leaders, oh God, to lead us into your presence and drop us off. God, I tell you thank you. Thank you for everything that has happened thus far. And God, I pray that you will continue to be with us, be in the midst of us, and do what you want to do. Move how you want to move. Yes. Let your spirit have free course in this place. Deliver God, set free, heal in this house. In Jesus' name, amen.
So our series that we're in is, as Pastor Ferris said, the fruit of the spirit. And the main book that we were looking at is Galatians. Um, I'm just going to read Galatians 5, uh, 16 through 22. Galatians 5, 16 through 22. This I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other. So that ye cannot do the things that you would. Amen. But if ye be led of the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, sedition, piercings, envy, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Paul is talking to a Galatian church. Amen. <laughs> of the which I tell you before as I have told you in time past that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God That's it. he's talking to the church Amen. but the fruit of the spirit is love, yes. joy, peace mm -hmm. long suffering, gentleness goodness, faith meekness, temperance against such there is no law and they that are Christ have crucified yeah. the flesh Amen. with the affections and lusts. They that are in Christ have done what? Crucified. 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 Killed it. Amen. Killed it. Yeah. So now we should be walking in, right? the spirit so that we do not continue to fulfill the lust of the flesh. Today I have the task of discussing the seventh fruit of the spirit which is faithfulness. I looked up the definition for faithfulness and it said faithfulness is a loyal, is loyal, committed and dedicated to a person cause or belief system despite difficulties Come on. temptations or challenges Amen. faithfulness Hallelujah. that's the definition but when I look at faithfulness I see it as a relational gift it affects every relationship in our lives Amen. it affects our marriages yes. it affects our friendships yes. it affects our whole family cousins, nieces yes. And it affects our relationship with God. Amen. Faithfulness. They have a saying when you get married, you know the vows, and when they get to speaking, they say, until what? Death do us part. In between that I do and death. It's some days that you look at your spouse and say, how do you remember how to get here? But we have to go back Amen. and remember Amen. the vows, right? Amen. But the root word for faithfulness is what? Faith. We're going to look closer at this word faith. Faith is trust in and loyalty to God. It's a firm belief in something for which there is no proof. Hebrews 11 describes it like this. Now faith is the substance. We talked about God being a foundation. It's the foundation of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Hebrews 11, 1, 11, 2 says, but for by it, the elders obtain a good report. Amen. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed in, by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things. 
the report that the elders received from God because of their faith was good. What is God's report concerning us in response to our faith? What is what do do we have a good report with God coming from God concerning us in response to our faith? Or are we shaken by every wind? Every text, every circumstance. Without faith, we cannot have faithfulness. Without faith, we cannot accept salvation. He, uh, Ephesians 2 and 8 says, For it is by faith you have been saved, by grace you have been saved through faith. And it is not from ourselves, but it's the gift of God. So we have obtained salvation by grace from God through faith in God. Amen. This salvation that we receive is the pathway to receiving God's spirit, right? Christ in us. The hope of glory. Jesus tells his disciples in John 14, 16, and I will pray the Father and he shall give you what? Another confidence yes, that he may be with you yes, forever. Yes, Jesus is letting them know, even though I'm with you, walking with you, I'm giving you instruction side by side. I'm going to send another comforter. That comforter, when it says another, it said that comforter is going to do the very thing that I've been doing. But it's not going to walk beside you, but it's going to reside in you. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, that's what Acts 2 say, they were all together in one place. The faithfulness of God stood up. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and it filled the house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came on each of them. It starts sitting on people. That's what we need. We need a Pentecost experience. It says all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Amen. This Spirit. Amen. The same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. It produces these said fruit. Amen. But today we're talking about faithfulness. The trust that we will survive <laughs> no matter what happens. No matter what life brings. This spirit gives us power to be witnesses of God. But how do we witness of him? I remember we used to have, a lot of people used to see them out passing out tracks. You know, they call that witnesses. But God called us to be living epistles. Come on. Known and read of men. Meaning my life need to be reflective That's of it. God's character. That's it. You preaching. But faithfulness. Look at your neighbor and say faithfulness. Faithfulness. Say it again. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. When you say that word, it sounds a little key. It sounds a little key. Faithfulness. Right? When you say it, put a little smile on you and say, faith. Faithfulness. But I found that faithfulness often shows up Come on. in testing. Come on. Come on. That's where I find it most at. In our lowest That's it. points That's in it. life yeah. is where we got to pull on that thing. I got to go back eight years ago and remember what you did back then. Amen. So my knees won't buckle too much and I won't lose my mind. I got to remember how you brought me out before. Amen. When we look at the story of Ruth and Naomi, we see the beginning of that story. Death, sorrow. Right. But Naomi's faithfulness in the midst of her bitterness yes. revealed to her 
that God was there Amen. all the time. He was her foundation. Amen. And Ruth's loyalty to Naomi and trust in the Lord proved fruitful Amen. through the marriage to Boaz. Amen. And it also allowed Ruth to be part of the line of David yes. by way Jesus came through. That's it. Noah, Daniel, and Job, they three men that were extolled for their righteousness by being faithful to God. Noah overcame the world by believing God and obeying him because faithfulness is attached to obedience. Amen. Right. It's the truth. It's the truth. Obedience to what? The word of God. What does God say concerning this matter? I know what it looks like. The Bible says faith come by what? Hearing. And hearing by the word of God. We can't go on what we see. Because what we see will fool us. Amen. You preach it. It'll fool you. Jesus told his disciples in John 16, one through seven, these things have I spoken unto you yeah. that ye should not be offended. Mm -hmm. They shall put you out of synagogues. Mm -hmm. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think they doeth God's service. Mm -hmm. And these things will they do to you because they have not what? Known the Father nor me. Uh -huh. But these things have I told you. That when the time shall come, you, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning because I was with you. Amen. I was with you. I ain't tell you then. But now I'm getting you prepared right, for another comforter. Let me tell you now. I got to go on tell you now. <laughs> but now I go my way yeah. to see him that sent me. That's it. And none of you asks me whether you go but because I have said these things unto you now that I'm telling you I gotta go back to my father That's it. you getting sad mm. nevertheless, nevertheless I tell you the truth it's expedient mm. that I go away for if I go not away the comfort yes, yes, yes. will not but if I depart, I will send him yes, he unto you. Faithfulness. The act of being faithful. Staying dedicated and loyal in the midst of hard times. Amen. Tests, trials, deaths, job loss, depression, seducing spirits, lies from the enemy, lies from ourselves, generational curses. Standing. Because of what God gave us. Amen. But we have this what treasure yes. in earthen vessel that the excellency of the yes, sir. Yes, sir. power to live right, right. power to love right, right. power to yes, stand yes. Yes. may be of God and not of us. But how then do we continue to walk? in faithfulness surrounded about all these things. How? God is faithful. And he's given us the power to do it. Romans 8, 28, and we know. And we know. It's something about that knowing. It's something about knowing. I, I, I ain't got a word. I don't have to. I know. Amen. And how do I know? I've seen him do it before. Amen. I've seen him do it before. Amen. And we know. That's right. And we know. That's the power of Holy Spirit making me a witness. And we know. Amen. All things. Hard times, yes. tests, yes. trials, yes. deaths, yes. job loss, yes. 
depression, seducing spirits, lies from the enemy, lies from ourselves, generational curses, and we know all things work together for the good of those, us, Amen. who are called not according to our agenda, but according to what? His purpose. But it don't stop there. 829 says, Romans 8, for those he foreknew. <laughs> oh my God, one time I, I, I wasn't in agreement with this thing, but now I know. Amen. For those he foreknew, he also predestined Amen. to be conformed to the image of his son. So that he would be the first born among many brethren, us. Amen. Conformed by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Conformed by the what? Yielding God. Because the Holy Spirit ain't going to come and title us and say, come. Amen. But by the Yield to the Holy Spirit. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Wherefore seeing we are also compact, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. The ones before us. Amen. Let us lay aside every weight. Jesus. And the sin. He's still talking to the church. Amen. Which does so easily That's it. beset us. That's it. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto man, no. my job, no. what people say, no. Jesus, Jesus, the author and finisher of my Faith. Now faith is Amen. the stuff, the, the substance, the foundation Amen. of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. But it says Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Despising the shame. Mm. And he's now set down well. Mm. In power. Amen. That was the ultimate show of faithfulness. Amen. The Bible said he was faithful even unto the cross. But just to encourage us in here today. James 1, 2, and for my brother and count it all joy, count it all hey. joy. <laughs> when he fall into divers temptation. Knowing this, that the child of your faith worketh patience. But, and this second word just kind of stuck out to me just now. Let. Let. Patience have her perfect work that you may be entire, complete. Wanting nothing. Galatians 6 and 9. And let us not be, come on. Let us not be weary. In well doing. What is this well doing? What is this well doing? Operating in the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, Amen. kindness, just let us not be weary Amen. in well doing. <clears throat> For in due season, due season. <laughs> is due season on the calendar? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Before a new season, 
we shall reap if we faint not. What we have to remember all about faithfulness, just like in a marriage, faithfulness is a commitment. That we can't take lightly. When we enter into marriage vows, we you can't take that lightly. Matter of fact, when we have children, when when we're in families, yes. we cannot take that lightly. Amen. It's a commitment. Amen. But definitely our commitment to the Father. We can't take it lightly. Luke 14, 27 says, and whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his his cross not my cross, not your cross. Amen. But we all got one to bear if we want to be his disciple. Amen. It comes with a commitment because sometimes you want to take your cross with God. That's right. But a lot of times we want God to use us. Use me, Lord. Use me, Lord. Come on. Come on. That's what we say. I send me, I go. But we're still going to miss a hard time. Tests, trials, deaths, jobs. Will we still go? Amen. Sickness. Amen. We still go. Will we still remain faithful? Because Jesus got in the Garden of Gethsemane, and the human part of him. So yeah, wait a minute. Come on. Amen. Hold on. If it be any other way. In Hebrews, what is it, the 10th chapter? What was it? He was talking about having a body prepared. Mm. Right? Amen. But then he got in the garden of Gethsemane and that flesh stood up. We talked about the flesh being at war with the spirit. That flesh stood up and said, if it's another way. <laughs> Get somebody else to do it. <laughs> but, but I say faith stood up in him. Amen. Love stood up in him. Because none of these characteristics of Christ could be carried out, uh, carried out without love first, Amen. right? Amen. All of it is an extension of love. But it stood up Amen. in the God. And he said, nevertheless, Amen. not my will, but your will be done. What is our response today to these things? What is our response? Because things happen. And when we say we accept Christ, Luke 22, am I right there? God told Peter, Satan asked for it. Mm -hmm. Come on. He told Job. Hey God. He Come told on. God about you. Amen. Have you tried? Amen. Have you tried? Have you tried my servant Job? Be faithful. Try Amen. Glory. Then Jesus told Peter. Satan had asked for you. Mm. Some of us, Satan, and ask for you. Ooh, What's your response? Yeah. But he said, What? I pray for you that your what? Faith hey. hey. fail not. Fail not. But when thou art converted, Come on. strengthen your brother. When I think about it, when he prayed for his faith, I thought about the question that Jesus asked the disciples. Uh, who do men say that I am? And then 
And he said, well, who do you say that I am? And then Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And then a few chapters later, here go Peter, hide. Lying. I won't with Jesus. I don't know. But what is our response? Amen. When Satan asks for them. Will we remain faithful? Amen. The act of being faithful, faithfulness, will we continue to walk in that when he asks for us? What is going to be our response? What is our response to these? We don't have to do it by ourselves. He's not alone. Because he sent another comfort. He sent another comfort. Yes, he did. So as we look at these things, what is the response? Because it's not going to be a cakewalk. It's not. Mm. It's not going to be a tiptoe through the tulips. Mm. Mm. Say that. Mm. Our yes attracts trouble. Yes. Anybody told God yes in here? Yes. And if you haven't, Today is the day of salvation. Amen. Today is the day of deliverance. But faithfulness. It's going to cost you something. Yes, it is. But one thing about it Jesus paid our price for it. Amen. Right? Amen. All we have to do is yield to the spirit and accept what he has done. We thank God on this morning Amen. for his faithfulness towards Amen. us in sending Jesus to die the blameless lamb. Amen. And even if you don't have a response to the enemy asking for you. What is your response to Jesus dying for you? Amen. What is your response this morning? Or do we need more strength to stand through what we're going through? Because we're going through, some of us. And if we're not, stand still and wait. Amen. Stand still and wait. But the good news is that he has predestined us to be conformed to the image of his son. Can he conform you today? Will we let it? Now we want to remain the same. The altar is open. You can come. If salvation is what you need. The altar is open. If deliverance is what you need. The deliverer is here. If healing is what you need, mind, body, and soul, the healer is here today to do it. Praise God. Hallelujah. Bless the name of our God in this place. you, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, your mercy never fails me. Of God. Hallelujah. All my days. You give God the glory. I've been 
held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will see of the goodness of God. you can watch it again but she talked about the faithfulness of God but one of the things that God's calling each one of us to do is to be faithful to him it's easy to talk about the faithfulness of God but I don't want to talk about my faithfulness 
And look how, look how faithful God is. I don't talk about my faithfulness. That's what God's calling us to, is to be faithful to him. Why? Because he is faithful. So, I, I, I mean, I was challenging that. Man, I, you know, let's just go ahead and, let's just go ahead and say it. How, how is your devotional time going, family? How's it going? Is Sunday morning at 1030? Is this your, is this your church for the week? Now, I'm not saying that this is not bad. No, it says in Hebrews, don't forsake the gathering of believers. Man, be here. But, oh, God has so much for you on Tuesday morning when you're sitting there in your prayer closet saying, Jesus, I don't know what I'm doing. And that's when Jesus says, oh, but I do. Oh, but I do. I, I was faithful to Noah. Did you hear him talk about it? I was faithful to Abraham and to Isaac. And to Isaiah, who said, who's going to go? Well, I'll go, Jesus. You sure about that, big boy? Isaiah said, I'll do it. So where are you at? Wake up tomorrow morning and say, God, I, I don't know what to do. But here I am. And Moses was very clear when he said what? If your presence doesn't go with me, then what? I ain't going to leave this place. So you may have to sit in your chair five more minutes and wait and listen and wait and listen and wait and listen. Oh, that's called being faithful. Being faithful means showing up every morning. God, I don't want to be here. I'm tired. Just show up. Aren't you glad? I'm so grateful. I know this is so cliche. I'm so grateful that God just said, you know what? I'm sleeping in this morning. I'm grateful for that. What if Jesus said, I don't want to do, on the, on the cross, Pastor Deshaun, when he walked up and said, I'm, not today, not today. I'm grateful. I'm thankful that he was faithful to what his father called him to do. That's why we're able to stand here. That's why we can shout. That's why we can be silent. That's why we can cry. That's why we can say, I am redeemed by the blood of the lamb. That's why I can say, I am saved by his amazing grace. My family, be faithful to the call that God has on your life. She said it 27 times. He who predestined us. Now, we can get into a long dis dissertation on that. But that just simply means that God called you. He sees you. Even in your mess. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Even, even in those that are addicted to drugs, yeah, it's called redeemed. It's called salvation. It's called Jesus said, here I am. I mean, you want to argue about that? What about the thief on the cross that said, but I didn't have time to get baptized. I didn't have time to go to vacation Bible school. I didn't have time to go and get my life right. Jesus said what? Today you will be with me in paradise. In those short minutes right there, he was faithful. He was faithful. Jesus was being faithful to what, the, what God had called him to do as well. Family, I'm asking I'm not exempt. For those of you that have glasses, my reflection is coming back to me tenfold. <laughs> Aaron, be faithful, son. Be faithful. I know some of you are like, but Pastor, we're old. We're, we don't need to do that. Oh, be faithful until you don't have breath. Why? Because what if God's favor that now is going to come tenfold to you? At my age of 84, I'm not 84, but I look great, don't I? But at 84, God, you're going to give me favor? Absolutely, he is. He just said he was faithful. Why is he going to stop doing it when you're 84? That doesn't make no sense. He's faithful. But church, we've got to be faithful in our part as well. Get in the word, as my friend Tim Thompson says. Get in the word. I don't know what to read. Call me, I'll tell you. Come see me, I'll show you. I'll give you the next seven days of what you can read. And it will be more than enough for the next 70 years. But it's all right. Because why? He's faithful. <laughs> He's faithful. Thank you, my sister, for being faithful and being uh, a student of the word this morning and delivering what God has had. I, I pray for all of you that you'll go back and listen to this again. If you need help listening to that again, come to me. I'll show you how you can find it on YouTube and all that stuff. But listen to it again. I'm going to have to because there were some things I missed because I was writing too fast and I wasn't listening to what he said. But there's some things in there. There's things for each and every one of us. Jesus, thank you for this time. 
It has been a joy. It's been a privilege. God, it's been a little bit of a struggle for me because I had to deal with some things on my own personal side. But God, I'm thankful that you were faithful. Your word never fails. It is true. It is true. It is true. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces bone and marrow, but oh God, is it ever life-giving. Lord, I pray that we would just evaluate our own selves, as Deshaun said this morning. God, where, where, are you, where are we at in this? And Lord, we wouldn't just blow that off, but we'll say, hmm, I know I need to give that to Jesus. I know it's probably going to come with some suffering, and it may even hurt some. But I know what he's going to give me is far greater than what I think is, is so important. So I trust him because he's faithful. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you for it today. Thank you for your word that has gone forth. God, I pray that it has fell on good soil. It cannot return void. And so, Lord, may we allow it to change us, to transform us for our good. Oh, but Jesus, for your glory. We love you. We worship you. We magnify your name today. You, Jesus, are worthy to be praised. As Pastor Hannah said earlier, God, in that desert time, but then also on that mountain where we can see for miles and miles and miles, you are there. But we love you. We praise you. We honor you. We glorify your name. Hallowed be your name. We exalt the name of Jesus. No other name. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. You are Lord. And we declare that today. We declare that over our lives. We declare this over this, this church called Northside. We declare that over our nation, over our leaders, God. You are Lord. Over our families, we, we speak that. Over our children, over our grandbabies, we speak that. You are Lord. Wherever they may be at, God, even if they are as far from you as possible, you are Lord. Hallelujah to your name. Glory to your name. We worship you and we give you all the praise and the glory. For it is in Jesus' name that we ask these things. Amen. Amen. And amen. I'm just going to go ahead and say this for you, whether believe it or not, it has been good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Wow. Thank you, Pastor Deshaun, for being faithful to the word of God. Um, we love you. We love Leon as well when you bring him. And, uh, so. Just a couple of real quick things. I know that some of you all are helping with Vacation Bible School setup. That is going to take place. We do have a little bit of lunch uh, for you as well. Pastor Katie will be back over here in just a second. Um, but as, again, as my dad has always said, many hands make light work. So if you are doing that, please stay. Um, we are going to do that very, very quickly. Uh, we've got some pretty outlined things that we can move into to get that done. Uh, but make sure you look at someone next to you and say, I'm, I'm going to be praying for you this week. And now, don't just be it flippantly. But be, be diligent in your prayer for one another. You are loved. You are loved. You are loved. You can shake hands. You can give hugs. However many you want to do, yes, I'm watching, and you are dismissed. Have a great day.